Welcome to Master Books Biology. This is lab two. We're going to explore pH testing and the hydrogen bonding of water molecules. So you're going to need a copy of your lab sheet instructions. This is in your book. And you're going to want to make sure you have all the required materials. There are two experiments. First experiment, we're gonna be testing the pH of water and various substances, bases and acids. And for experiment B, we're gonna be testing the hydrogen bonding of water molecules. So you'll need these ingredients in, in these materials in order to do those two experiments. So for the first experiment, we needed three uh, 100 liter or milliliter beakers, and I have labeled them. This one is distilled water. This one is distilled water and vinegar. This one is going to be distilled water and baking soda. So what I'm going to do is, or what I've already done, is I have used my graduated cylinder here to uh, put 50 mils of distilled water into each one of these beakers. And that's all they have right now in them. So I'm going to test, as a control, the pH of plain distilled water with my pH indicator paper here. And this is the distilled water and hold it in there for just a couple of seconds, and then pull it out, shake off the excess, and lay it here on our paper. I find that laying it onto a white background helps you to see the pH much better. And this is obviously a pH of seven for our water. Let me get my marker so that I can write the results here. So with the distilled water, we have a pH of seven. All right, so we have, we can move that out of the way. Now let's test the pH of our vinegar. And I have vinegar here, and I'm gonna start by adding 20 mils of the vinegar. And this is a 20 mil um, eyedropper. So I'm going to watch where this line comes up to. Okay, right there. That's 20 mils of vinegar. get a paper towel. And I'm going to use this glass rod to stir my vinegar in and mix it well. I don't want it just floating right on the top because that'll give us an inaccurate reading. So let's test the pH of adding this vinegar, which is an acid, to the water. So I'm gonna hold it in there for just a few seconds and shake off the excess. And this is plus 20 mils. That's a pretty orange color. All right, let's do an additional 20 mils of vinegar and see what that gives us. There's another 20 mils of the vinegar. We're gonna mix that in to make sure it's not all localized, but that it's nice and homogenized, which means evenly distributed. I'm gonna take a piece of the pH paper and let it sit for just a couple of seconds. And shake off the excess, and you can see a change from this one to this one. This one's a much brighter orange. And this looks like a pH of six, Whereas this one looks more like a pH of five, getting close to four, but it's a, it's a solid five. So we have a pH of six with the 20 mils of vinegar and a pH of five with 40 mils of vinegar. So let's test our baking soda. Baking soda is a base. We're going to use a um, clean glass rod, and I'm going to get a good heaping teaspoon. It's a half teaspoon. And the thing to do is to take your glass rod and just rub it across the top, make that nice and level, so you know that with dry measurements, if you do that, you know you have a, a you know a very accurate 
distribute or measurement of that substance. That's the way I like to do dry. I'm gonna put that in, and I'm actually going to um, because there's looks like there's some bits stuck. I'm gonna stir with my spoon. This is a plastic spoon. Touch, be careful with you that with, but it's just baking soda and water. And I just wanted to get all of the powder off just to make sure that I had a good, um, you know, all of the baking soda in the water. And I'm just going to keep stirring it till it looks fairly dissolved. That looks pretty good. I'm going to dry this off. And so now I'm going to test this with my pH paper. Hold that in there for a few seconds and then remove it. And we can see that's a pretty, pretty kind of dark green color. And that looks like it is approximately a 10. It's getting a little darker as we watch. It's definitely not a nine. It's darker than a nine. So it might be a nine and a half, but it, it's, it could be a 10. So I'm gonna put pH of 10 because it's closer to the 10 than it is to the nine. So we can see from this experiment that when we add vinegar, the acid, um, the pH decreases, but when we add the baking soda, then the pH increases. All right. Let's move on to the second experiment. So for our second experiment, we're going to float a needle on the meniscus of a cup of water. Now, this cup of water is very, very full right now. It's full to the top and it's just a little bit over, but the meniscus is not quite strong enough to hold the needle. What happens when you have a meniscus, a meniscus forms when you have a, um, a surface tension that's formed by the water pressing up and not quite over it's like it's it's filling up the container it's overfilling the container and when it does that it creates this opportunity for the hydrogen to bond and it, it's almost like holding hands they stick together on the surface of the water and it creates this this extra strong surface tension when it starts to spill up and over before it overfills so we need to get to that point so i'm going to keep adding some water in here um, until and you want to do it very slowly so that it doesn't just overflow you want to catch it right before it overflows Let's see if I can keep I want to make a nice high meniscus here so that it will hold uh, as, as well as possible this needle Let's see if I can just, uh, let me check my meniscus and see how tall it is Probably get just a couple more drops. Probably pushing my luck here. You can probably see by the reflection of the water that it is domed up a little bit. The reflection has moved from the edge more toward just inside the edge. That's the reflection of the light. Let's see if I can get that really good and high. The further that reflection moves toward the inside, the higher the dome of the water is, the higher the meniscus is. So I think I have a good meniscus now. So I'm going to um, balance, and you have to put it on their level or it won't catch it. If you put it in like this, the point will just go through. So let's see if we can balance this off here. Yes, and it floats. Now, the thing that will disrupt that meniscus, let me see if I can get it to come over here. It's trying to actually push the needle off, and it did. So I'm going to wait just a moment and put that on after I get my soap ready. Soap will break the hydrogen bond of the meniscus. So I'm going to get this liquid soap in an eyedropper here to show you kind of how that works. Let me get that full. All right, so that's full. 
So I want to catch this. Let me drop this here. And what's happening, why it moves from side to side, is that there is a dome here. And it's falling off of the hill of the dome. That's why it's moving to the outside. So there's my needle. And here's my soap. And you can see the water start to, let me move that back toward the inside, and it falls. You can see the water start to uh, fall off the side. That's because the meniscus was disrupted and um, the hydrogen was caused to let go by the soap. And then the water that was kind of domed up over the top has fallen down the sides. And that's also what's caused our needle to fall because the meniscus is no longer 